My name is Rick Mannon and today I'm honored to be interviewing Bill Morgan. Bill was introduced to Judo at the age 15 while competing in the 1990 World Games for the Blind in Assen, Holland as a wrestler. He studied Judo at the Brantford Judo Club from 1990 to 2010. Throughout his career on the national team, Bill competed in several international competitions in 11 countries and achieved numerous medals. Bill is a Pan American champion, a two-time world bronze medalist, and he also represented Canada at the Sydney 2000, Athens 2004, the Beijing 2008 Summer Paralympics, finishing 7th, 5th, and 7th respectively. Bill, what drew you into your sport? Well, I first became involved in wrestling uh, right here in this very gym, actually. Um, I came to Brantford at the age of 10 and uh, hadn't had a whole lot of, of sporting experience prior to that, uh, just as a direct result of concern for uh, my safety and well-being with having uh, limited eyesight. So when I came here um, to W. Ross, uh, I was exposed to a number of sports, but what I found about wrestling was uh, there was so much contact with your partner in training and then your, of course your, your opponent in competition that uh, the sport really lended itself nicely for someone uh, with limited eyesight um, and there were rules in place. Uh, I was really, really drawn to that and then um, approximately five years later uh, at a world championships uh, for blind wrestling I was exposed to judo. Uh, which had many of the same characteristics, very much uh, high level of contact. Um, you know, there wasn't anything like striking or, or anything like that. So vision really didn't play a, a huge factor. And uh, they were both similar and they're both combative sports. And so it just made sense that I, that I transition. Um, and I did both actually all through high school. It's just that judo was a Paralympic sport and that was my, my dream was to get to the Paralympics. Great. Do you have any mentors that have had an impact on your life, your sport, or your career? Uh, again, <clears throat> when I came when I came to Brantford, it really started here. Um, having having people around you that believed in you, believed that you could do whatever you set your mind to, it was very different from what I had previously experienced, and. Um, John Howe was a huge mentor for me. He was my wrestling coach. Uh, he guided me every step of the way through my entire wrestling career and he even played a role in my judo career when I had some ups and downs and uh, you know needed someone to chat to. Uh, he always had a way of, of helping things make sense for me and um, he, he taught me more than a more than just sports though. He taught me about being a good person. He taught me about public speaking. He taught me about uh, planning and preparing and dedication and you know and those were the skills that really uh, helped me to become successful in life not just sport and um, you know it was just a huge uh, male role model for me at that time um, still at this time as well um, there were a number of athletes that I really looked up to as well over the years um, you know in particular really I, I think of a teammate that I had, Pierre Morton, um, he was both deaf and blind and one of the most phenomenal athletes that I ever had the opportunity to uh, not only train with but also watch him compete. You know, and I consider my, my own circumstances and, uh, you know, dealing with loss of vision uh, presents its own challenges. Uh, but in a sport like wrestling or judo where you're out on a mat on your own and I still have the luxury of listening to my coach's direction and he was literally out there on his own. Uh, I just had you know, tremendous amount of respect for, for what he could do. And uh, it just really showed me that uh, anything really is possible if, if we have the, the passion and drive to do it. What are some of the highlights of your career? Wow. Uh, my highlights started really from a young age as far as sort of winning my first a uh, wrestling match was a huge highlight. Uh, I believe I went more than two years uh, without winning a match. And uh, I always think back to, to John Howe telling me it was all going to work out, it would, it would all be fine. And 
I, I still think of it now thinking two years of someone telling me it's all going to work out and uh, you know you're losing and you're losing and you're losing and, and uh, clearly if you're a competitor losing is, is not what you want to be doing and just having someone continuously uh, be able to convince me you know um, that takes a special person to, to just be able to convince me that it would all work out and so um, the year that I won my first uh, match I also was the Brant County champion and so it really turned turned right around it went from kind of zero to a hundred and uh, from there um, every opportunity was possible for me basically um, I had a chance to go to the world championships for wrestling uh, when I was 15 um, I was pretty young at the time uh, you know a few matches that could have went differently just by the slightest of margins and I, and I might have left with a medal but I didn't and that again that's where I saw judo and, and realized that that's what I wanted to do and um, you know many of my highlights really wouldn't um, be as obvious to some people uh, because if, if we look at my list of achievements they're not on there but having the opportunity to compete against sighted athletes and be successful um, was a, an incredibly huge highlight for me because um, it sort of started out as uh, you know that this guy here is a really good good wrestler or a good judoka considering he's blind and then later it just became this guy's just a great athlete and there was nothing about blind anymore and, and so that in and of itself is just a, an extremely huge highlight uh, because uh, now you're just being respected as an athlete no one's really looking at your deficits and uh, and then of course you know uh, I went on to uh, to three Paralympics uh, five world championships a um, couple of bronze medals at the world championships and you know the medals are great and I have them and I can show people them but again the highlights are uh, you know parading into Sydney Australia Stadium for my first Paralympics um, just feeling that that energy of you know a hundred thousand people uh, approximately just there for you and uh, taking that all in was just just uh, incredible so yeah I mean there's a there's an extremely long list of, of highlights the the whole journey was a highlight really how has sport impacted your life I would say sport was and still kind of is my life. Um, I'm no longer competing in sport, um, but I can, I can truly say it shaped me into the person that I am. Um, sports has the ability to give us um, opportunity to, to prepare, dedicate yourself, be devoted to something that you're passionate about. You have a chance to compete. Um, you know, I'm a competitive person by nature. I have a hard time just doing things for, for fun. Um, that's just the way that I'm wired, I suppose. When you, when you take all of the skills that you learn uh, throughout your sporting career, and they're able to transfer those to virtually every aspect of life, whether it be your personal life, whether it be your professional life. Um, I remember when I, when I decided to go to university, I was in my mid-30s. And um, I really never saw myself going to university. I, I didn't, just didn't see it happening. And, and uh, a couple of people that were close to me in sport said, you know, just treat it, treat it like you're training and preparing for a competition. And I said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, you're gonna have to work, well, work on your time management. You're gonna have to dedicate yourself. You're gonna have to set time aside for schoolwork and reading. You know, that's your training. And then when you get to the exams and all of those things, you know, those are your competitions. And it was really funny because once I started sort of planning my life that way, um, I, I flourished and it, it was much easier than I ever dreamt it would be. But it was that life experience that sort of influenced that entire process. So um, yeah, I, I just feel fortunate that all of the skills that I've learned, I can continue to use in life. And I, and I try and get involved in sport where I can. And, um, teach up and coming athletes some of the most basic things that um, help you to become a successful athlete. You know, I might not have all the skills down pat in each and every sport, but I think be behind all of that, there, there's obviously a set of, uh, a skill set that 
all athletes can can consider uh, in order to become successful. Sure, that's great. Bill, what does it mean for you to be inducted into the Sports Hall of Recognition? Oh wow, uh, it was a pretty big surprise. Uh, not something that I ever really um, ever really gave any thought to. You know, it, it's it's one of those things that. Um, I've been honored in so many different ways over the years, whether it be um, certificates or standing on, uh, you know, podiums at, at big events, and uh, yeah, I just never really thought that. Um, I guess I thought when I retired from sport, it was over, and as far as the, you know, the, kind of that recognition side of things goes, and so to receive that phone call and to think. You know, it still lives on, and there's an, yet another recognition and, and a way to be honored, and uh, that my story will will still carry on and, and possibly influence someone, you know, in the years to come. Uh, yeah, it was really moving. I, I was really surprised by the entire uh, process. I was very moved uh, at the ceremony. Um, again, I didn't really uh, anticipate that, but when I got there and was able to hear others' stories and just uh, just incredible and so a uh, huge honor to join uh, such an amazing group of people and and I'm really astounded how Brantford has managed to uh, have so many successful athletes in such a wide range of sports uh, I don't know if there's uh, many communities that would be able to to compare uh, I wouldn't know how you would find out but I think it's pretty remarkable so yeah. to be a part of that is uh, it's just amazing uh, what advice would you share with a young aspiring athlete? Wow, uh, I think I think the, the biggest thing that comes to mind is believe in the believers. <clears throat> you know, uh, I had some people that believed in me, and that helped me to believe in me. And um, you know, the, the sport is a funny thing. There's uh, there's so many ups and downs. Uh, you know, you, e even as a just a casual uh, sports enthusiast who just tries to get out and do things once in a while, you know, they run into an injury and all of a sudden, you know, that's a roadblock. And when you get into elite sports, you run into all sorts of obstacles. And and there's so many times when it feels like it would be much easier to just sort of walk away and pack it in and. Uh, and carry on with life and yet there's still people around you uh, the team that you build around you that is and they keep believing and if it weren't for my team who believed in me um, I think my career would have been shorter I think I would have found a way to just move on to other things and uh, but they believed in me and and I think for up-and-coming athletes um, you know surround yourself with good people good people will encourage you to do good things and again that might be in the sporting environment uh, you may do that for a year or two or 20 or or more years but you'll still be able to take those skills and apply it to life and by then you will be familiar with surrounding yourself with good people and uh, that is what I did and I do believe that that was a, a significant part so um, and yeah, find something you're passionate about. I think that passion truly is uh, the key to being successful in anything we wish to be successful. And if you, if you don't love what you're doing or you know just feel that passion, um, I, I think you can do all right. But if I think of the word excelling and achieving, uh, I think it's the passion. And um, I was fortunate enough to develop a passion for my sport and it took me to a place that I never uh, dreamt was was possible it's what I wanted to do but uh, getting there I really didn't know what that entailed and uh, passion certainly helped me to, to get there so that would be my my advice <laughs>